After the immediate discussion, now it is my pleasure to introduce the uh, next speaker. This is uh, Professor Bartłomiej Kaużny from Poland. He will speak on presbyopia correcting IOLs and post-operative astigmatism. Please. Thank you very much, Professor Grzybowski, for uh, invitation. Uh, Dear colleagues, uh, my financial disclosures are given at the bottom of the slide and they include uh, Alcon and Johnson & Johnson, uh, the producers of presbyopia uh, correcting IOLs. And during the presentation, I'm going to share some thoughts, uh, some uh, scientific data on presbyopia correcting IOLs and uh, post-operative uh, astigmatism. Uh, I would like to start with a, a paper that was published in uh, 2011, 10, ten years ago, uh, by Professor De Newt's uh, group. Uh, one of the conclusion was that ametropia and residual astigmatism are a leading cause of patients' dissatisfaction with uh, multivocal IOLs and monovision. And uh, indeed, uh, about 65% of eyes uh, the, of patients dissatisfied uh, had ametropia or astigmatism. Uh, and mean refractive uh, spherical equivalent was uh, not 0.2. Uh, however, the, the spread of, of, of the results were quite high. The range of results were high. Uh, and mean refractive cylinder was about one diopter. So it was uh, really high, especially for multifocal uh, IOLs. Some years later, it was uh, 2016, uh, uh, another paper was published by uh, Gunders and, and co-authors. Co uh, uh, the paper was on uh, retreatments uh, after multifocal uh, intraocular lens, uh, and they uh, stated that uh, the multifocal retreatment rate was about 11%. Uh, the eyes with, that require retreatment retreat had a significantly higher residual refractive astigmatism uh, compared with those who didn't require uh, treatment. So again, the astigmatism was, was an important factor of dissatisfaction and problems. Uh, and conclusion was uh, complaints related to ametropia were the main reasons for uh, treat, uh, retreatment. And the residual astigmatism appears to be an important determinant uh, of retreatment rate after multifocal IOL implantation. And uh, another paper, uh, uh, even more recent, uh, 2011, um, again, dissatisfaction after trifocal IOL implantation, uh, 213 eyes. Uh, and again, refractive astigmatism of greater than half uh, diopters uh, was the most frequent residual refractive error, followed by myopia, hyperopia, and increased ocular uh, uh, higher uh, order aberrations. Uh, this uh, shows that um, with the time, uh, the biometry and uh, IOL calculation formulas improved, uh, and myopia and hyperopia is less important than, uh, than refractive uh, astigmatism, uh, which uh, changes uh, the situation a little bit. And uh, what's uh, again uh, quite interesting that after sorry that after selective wavefront guided LASIK, uh, the refractive target was achieved in 98 percent of eyes, and the refractive astigmatism within plus minus half diopter. Uh, was in 93% uh, of eyes, and the correction of refraction, especially astigmatism, significantly improved satisfaction score of, of, of those patients, and in, uh, it increased from uh, two, not uh, 2.1 preoperatively to 3.6 postoperatively, uh, where the higher, highest score was uh, 4. And uh, the last patient I would like to cite at this part of my presentation uh, is the one published uh, uh, by uh, Professor Potvin Group. Uh, and it is quite, a, let's say, surprising. The results are, are quite surprising. Uh, the common belief, and we believe that uh, 
uh, monofocal lenses are, um, let's say, uh, more, um, uh, let's say, tolerant to postoperative astigmatism, uh, whereas this uh, paper, which was based on a um, big number of eyes, uh, you can see the slide, uh, they were either, either multifocal toric IOLs or monofocal toric IOLs. And the conclusion, that's the results uh, where uh, some of the results are shown on, on these graphs. Uh, on uncorrected uh, distance visual acuity for low amount astigmatism of postoperative astigmatism or was high and was very similar uh, in monofocal and multifocal group. Uh, and of course, with the uh, increase uh, of the postoperative astigmatism, the visual acuity goes down. Uh, but there is no different difference between monofocal and uh, multifocal uh, IOLs. So this is quite uh, surprising. We always uh, believe that uh, multifocals are, are more demanding in terms of uh, postoperative uh, astigmatism. Uh, and another graph from this uh, presentation, from this paper, uh, it compares uncorrected distance visual acuity between uh, techniques uh, toric monofocal and uh, symphony toric ad hoc IOL. Uh, and again, there is no uh, difference between lenses uh, with the increase of uh, refractive cylinder. And the conclusion, uh, one of the conclusion is that uh, residual refractive astigmatism had a similar effect on worsening on distance of distance uh, visual acuity uh, in eyes with monofocal or uh, multifocal multifocal toric IOLs, regardless uh, of whether the latter were diffractive or extended uh, depth of focus uh, IOLs. And so we can conclude that mm, it doesn't matter. If, the, if you are going to implant monofocal or multifocal or head of lens, we should always uh, be careful and uh, try to achieve as low postoperative astigmatism as, as possible. Uh, we know that majority of our patients scheduled for refractive surgery have had uh, uh, relatively high corneal astigmatism and we should uh, deal uh, with this kind of astigmatism. Uh, we could uh, perform uh, steep, uh, incision a steep meridian. We can uh, do an opposite clear corneal incision. We also, the other option is limbal uh, corneal relaxing incisions. But the most, uh, let's say, efficient uh, and safe way is to implant uh, toric uh, IOLs. Mm. Uh, there are some short movies, but they don't work, but uh, it's not a problem. But we still have a number of, of, of difficulties, of issues uh, regarding correcting uh, corneal astigmatism uh, before, uh, uh, before, during and after the surgery. Uh, first of all, to determine uh, corneal astigmatism before the surgery, it also is quite uh, difficult. Even if we use, if we use uh, our very conventional technology, Keratometry, uh, it also differs uh, between different uh, instruments, uh, which is mainly dependent on uh, diameter of, of the uh, central area which is uh, uh, measured. Uh, it can provide significantly different uh, results. More often, we use uh, integrated K from different instruments to, 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 to achieve this, this mini value. Mm, but uh, this is uh, also one of our problems at, at this moment, at this stage. And moreover, uh, a, the peripheral cornea becomes significantly flatter, but uh, what's even more uh, with, connected with this lecture, that slightly less astigmatic uh, than a central cornea. So astigmatism also changes from the center to the periphery of the cornea. We should, of course, be very careful about patients with uh, against the rule astigmatism. Uh, we know that both anterior and posterior corneal surfaces contribute to, to, to refractive power. And with the rule astigmatism, 
uh, let's say it, uh, it, uh, it, it a little bit helps. Uh, it uh, makes the total astigmatism smaller, but uh, if it is against the rule, it is the opposite. Uh, and uh, it was this this idea was was also introduced in Baylor toric nomogram, which is quite commonly used nowadays to calculate uh, toric IOLs. Mm, of course, it would be better to measure mm, measure uh, each patient total corneal astigmatism uh, and use this uh, posterior uh, corneal astigmatism measured uh, by uh, in this uh, individual eye. However, there are also some papers uh, which say that measurement of posterior astigmatism with modern corneal uh, tomographers, uh, of course, it impro uh, has improved greatly, but still individual individual measurements uh, may still be subject of uh, significant uh, variations. Uh, but uh, in the practice, uh, uh, every day we use, uh, for everyday practice, we very often use uh, Barrett toric calculator or, or similar calculators. Uh, we introduce only keratometry readings, um, and mm, it makes a theoretical adjustment of posterior corneal astigmatism. Uh, and uh, there was a paper which uh, uh, proved that uh, directly measuring the posterior corneal curvature didn't produce better outcomes than using theoretical adjustments of a Barrett uh, toric calculator. We are getting better with our diagnostics. It may be not valid uh, in the future, but in 2007 at least it was uh, it was the case. Now, in theory, we can also use interoperative uh, aberrometry. However, it also has some some uh, problems and disadvantages, and one of them is is, uh, is availability of the instrument. Another issue that I would like to raise is is available uh, availability of uh, toric uh, IOLs. We still don't have a T1 lens. Uh, so we cannot collect less than uh, 0.67 diopters of corneal um, astigmatism at, at corneal plane. Yeah, but in some cases, uh, it should be, I think, useful. Mm, but the main, the main problem and the, the, the most important problem is uh, still surgically induced uh, astigmatism. Uh, we introduced this uh, this uh, value to to toric IOL calculators, uh, so it is uh, very useful. However, uh, even with small incisions and fixed uh, meridians, uh, surgically induced astigmatism uh, is highly highly uh, via variable, especially in more uh, curved corneas. And here is here is one example. Uh, this is also not a, a new uh, paper. We also improved in this area, but just looking uh, late, some years back, uh, 2.2 incisions, uh, incision, uh, yeah, five different surgeons, surgically uh, induced astigmatism mean value, um, uh, more than 0.4 uh, diopters, and quite high uh, standard deviation. And this is even even worse, but because we cannot introduce uh, standard deviation to any nomogram or, or, or calculator. Uh, we can go uh, further with decreasing the, the, the size of the, of, the, of the main incision, clear corneal incision, but even uh, with uh, larger CMIX, uh, Still, even in, in, in best surgeons, they can achieve uh, 0.4 uh, diopters of, uh, of uh, surgically induced astigmatism with quite, again, high uh, standard deviation. Uh, of course, it's much better to calculate uh, surgically induced astigmatism with uh, uh, the double angle plot, uh, uh, using double angle plots and uh, in this, uh, with this way, with very careful, uh, very meticulous surgery, uh, we can go down with uh, uh, surgically induced astigmatism to 0.2 uh, diopters. 
uh, no matter if it is manual or femtosecond laser cut, but still uh, when we look at the graph, uh, there is a, quite a high spread of, of the results, which uh, indicate that in, in particular, uh, I uh, surgically induced astigmatism is still a problem. And another problem is uh, toric uh, IOL misalignment. Uh, using uh, manual assisted preoperative ma uh, marking, uh, we usually achieve uh, about four degrees of 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 of, uh, of, of uh, you know, mis misalignment. With digital marking, it's a little bit better, but still uh, more than two the two the degrees. Uh, and in most studies after toric eye implantation, mean refractive astigmatism ranges between uh, 0.7 and 1 diopter. So it is surprisingly, surprisingly high and it is a, a quite a, a, very, a very recent uh, study. And uh, last issue I would like to raise is, 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 is uh, changes uh, of corneal astigmatism with, uh, with time. Uh, we should be aware that uh, especially anterior surface, surface of the cornea changes with time uh, and it changes from with the rule astigmatism in the uh, se uh, second uh, decade of life in, in patient 60s it's usually uh, usually around zero but in the 70s uh, it becomes uh, against the rule the astigmatism changes and it, it begins to be against the rule so even if we perform the surgery and cal make a calculation for younger patient, after many years, we, there might be a surprise, especially if we take into account uh, the conclusion of, of another uh, paper. Uh, there is a proof that corneal astigmatism continues to change uh, towards uh, uh, against the rule over 20 years after cataract surgery. And this change is similar in eyes uh, that uh, uh, didn't have uh, a surgery. Uh, so to, to finish my presentation, I would like to say that we have came a long way with uh, correcting uh, uh, and postoperative astigmatism and achieving more and better and better results postoperatively. But there is a still way, a long way to go. There is still room uh, for improvement. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, uh, Bartek, for a great uh, overview of the uh, topic of the role of astigmatism and the correction of presbyopia. And that now it's my pleasure to introduce the next speaker. It's a colleague from uh, Kiev, from Ukraine, Dr. Volodymyr Melnik who is the founder and the chairman of the Ukrainian Cataract and the Refractive Society. Uh, Volodymyr, great pleasure to have you with us. Please. Uh, so beautiful. Thank you for invitation, Professor Andrzej Grzebowski. I hope you enjoy all these lectures and I hope you will enjoy my lecture too. Uh, now I, I'll try to, to go to my presentation. Uh, uh, to, to, to. Just a minute. Uh -huh. Okay, I, I, I'll see only uh, slides, but I... Uh, a uh, few words about me. Uh, my name is Vladimir Melnik. I am uh, head of the Society of Ukrainian Ophthalmic Surgeons. I am founder and... Uh, uh, just a minute, maybe here. No. I am founder and medical director of clinic Visio Boot in Kiev. Uh, so I'm uh, fond of, I, I represent Ukraine on the ECRS and I usually represent all my scientific works in uh, different events uh, such as uh, American or European events. Uh, I'm fond of sport, 
I fond of running. Uh, I have few marathons in my life, and my last marathon was this Sunday in Paris. Uh, I fond of swimming, uh, but my best win is my family, my wife, and two beautiful children. So what about my presentation? It's about uh, disappointment of patient. Uh, when we implant multifocal or trifocal IOLs or ADOF IOLs. Uh, sure, usually mostly maybe 70 or 75 percent of all my patients, uh, I implant them monofocal IOLs. And what uh, uh, reason of the disappointment? It's a dependence from spectacles, especially if we speak about young patients who never use spectacles in their life. And uh, if after surgery they need spectacles, it can be a big problem for them. Uh, when we speak about multifocal IOLs, uh, usually uh, patients are disappointed because uh, they, had, they have uh, worse vision than had it before, or they have optical phenomena like glare, halo, starbursts. And uh, sometimes people are not satisfied because they wished to have better vision than they have it after surgery. Uh, in my practice, I usually use now two types of multifocal IOLs. It is trifocal IOLs and ADOF IOLs. Here you can see all types of IOLs which I usually use, uh, but mostly it is uh, 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 intraocular. It is not, uh, I don't have any financial disclosure, but in my practice, I usually use Alcon uh, intraocular lenses, trifocal lenses, panoptics, and ADOF lenses, VVT. And mostly I will speak about these types of IOLs in my presentation. What are the main aspects which we, which we have to, uh, which can affect on the choice of trifocal or ADOF IOLs? Uh, I think that there are three main aspects. It's medical, social, and professional aspects for all people. Uh, if we speak about uh, uh, medical arguments for IOLs choice, uh, in my practice, I don't recommend trifocal IOLs for people who have monocular vision, who uh, don't uh, uh, have any possibilities to have uh, binocular vision. Uh, I don't recommend uh, this uh, trifocal IOLs for people who have uh, any uh, eye diseases, uh, which can decrease vision after, after surgery. It's corneal diseases, retinal diseases, and I don't recommend uh, this type of IOLs for patients with glaucoma. And when we speak about ADOF IOLs, uh, uh, actually I don't have any medical arguments for limits of ADOF IOLs. Uh, sure, I don't recommend if I have uh, ADOF IOLs if I have some uh, diseases in, in, in patients and I understand that uh, this patient uh, don't have any, doesn't have any opportunity for high vision. But if we have, for example, hard nucleus and we have, uh, we don't know what vision can this patient have after surgery, uh, it, it is not limit for implantation of ADOF IOL. Uh, what about social uh, limits? Uh, I don't recommend trifocal IOLs for emetropic patients in cases of refractive lens exchange because I understand that they will have uh, vision uh, worse than that it had before. I don't recommend patients who not agree on the surgery on the both eyes because it is bilateral implantation uh, IOLs. And I don't recommend for a refractive lens exchange in patients with in, in young patients who drive a lot. And if uh, I uh, uh, need to to implant ADOF IOLs, I don't recommend this uh, uh, type of IOLs for patients with refractive lens exchange with low or moderate myopia, myopia and for patients who fully are not agreed to use spectacles on any distance in future life.
and professional arguments uh, for uh, uh, choice of trifocal IOLs. I don't recommend for professional drivers and for people who walk a lot with small details or near distance and uh, for long period of time. Uh, and uh, if we speak about the DOF IOLs, uh, I don't have any professional limits for this type of IOL. Uh, I, uh, I would like to represent a few clinical cases of patients with uh, different uh, type of IOLs which I implanted in, uh, during the surgery. And uh, first the case is patient 52 years old. He had refractive surgery near 20 years ago. It was LASIK, and uh, when he came in my clinic, his vision was 10-10 with uh, sphere minus one, one and half diopters on the right eye, and A-10 with sphere minus three and half diopters on the left eye. For far distance, he used spectacles, and he uh, he was he is active man. He uh, didn't want to use spectacles, and we decided to do a uh, refractive lens exchange. Uh, at first, we wanted to do on the left eye, and then we wanted to do on the right eye this surgery, and we did operation on the left eye, and we had uh, uh, vision on the left eye 9-10 with myopia minus one and a half diopters, uh, and we, when we checked all our examination, we understand we understood that we had a mistake uh, in IOL calculation. It was near plus two diopters mistake. Uh, we wa we waited uh, three months. We uh, uh, wanted that uh, we we supposed that uh, uh, maybe it it's some position of IOLs or some neuro adaptation of the patient, but nothing changed and uh, patient was uh, extremely unhappy because he uh, didn't get independence from the spectacles and uh, through three months after surgery we decided to do uh, we decided can we end a video I have tried to do it myself. Okay, uh, uh -huh, or, or video. We decided to do IOL uh, explantation and uh, exchange of intraocular lens with correct power. Here you can see uh, this uh, manipulation in this surgery. At first, I cut uh, guptic elements and remove these elements from eye, and then I uh, cut optical part of intraocular lens and uh, remove it. Um, uh, you, you can see that I usually uh, cut uh, intraocular lens on few pieces and removing of uh, two or three pieces of intraocular lens is not uh, a big problem when we cut it in, in the anterior chamber of eye. And after surgery, this patient, I implanted him trifocal intraocular lens panoptics with small correction of astigmatism. Uh, after surgery, this patient uh, had got vision uh, 9 10 without any correction. He was very satisfied, everything was fine. But when we spoke with him about surgery on the right eye, he told, no, no, no. Not now, because uh, my my experience is not so on problems that uh, I, I uh, thought before surgery. The second the second clinical case is it's quite young woman, fifty one years old. In uh, anamnesis, she had myopia minus three and half diopter on the both eyes. And when he came in my clinic, he, she, when she came in my clinic, uh, uh, she, she was uh, uh, she had implantation of uh, uh, Adolf Irl's symphony on one eye, 
and uh, her vision was 10 10 with uh, three and uh, and half the minus three and half diopter on right eye and 10 10 on left eye where she had uh, uh, where she had implantation of uh, IOL symphony but she was extremely unhappy because she had got vision on the near distance worse than it than she had it before and uh, when she compare vision on right eye on le and on left eye she understood that uh, vision on near distance on left eye uh, quite worse than on the right eye and uh, when she asked me what uh, have i do i told the, i answered her that one our recommendation is uh, to perform surgery on the right eye and but uh, we decided to implant IOL trifocal IOL for best for better vision on the near distance. Uh, and uh, her main question was: Will my vision on the right eye, uh, on the near distance, be so good as now? Sure, we couldn't promise her this uh, uh, this quite good vision on uh, on right eye on the near distance, and uh, we decided not to do surgery quite now. We decided to wait uh, some adaptation uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, she, she will adapt to, for, for her monovision. And uh, when uh, she decided to, when she will decide to do the surgery, I'll do uh, like uh, uh, I supposed. Uh, and the uh, third my uh, clinical case, it's man 73 years old. He, she, he had Matthew cataract on the right eye and initial cataract on the left eye. And he uh, didn't want to do surgery on the left eye. That's why we decided, but he wanted to have vision on different distances. That's why we decided to do surgery on the right eye and implant uh, Adolf IOL VVT on the right eye. Uh, uh, now you can see this uh, surgery. Uh, you can see that uh, it is quite mature cataract and problems uh, with surgery uh, I had on the beginning of this surgery. I uh, couldn't uh, do in uninterrupted uh, anterior capsular axis. That's why I uh, need to do cutting of uh, anterior, anterior capsule of, of the lens. After uh, removal of uh, nucleus and cortical mass, I decided to, uh, to do uh, support of uh, capsule back and implant uh, intracapsular ring. And then I implanted this intraocular lens VVT, but uh, I saw that this support is not enough. And I understood that uh, it is, uh, can be a big problem after surgery because position of this intraocular lens is not so stable that it is necessary for uh, multifocal intraocular lens. That's why I decided to do uh, one, one suture on the iris and to make uh, uh, support for uh, this intraocular lens by suture. Here you can see uh, this uh, procedure uh, 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 and then you will see what we had got after surgery. Uh, position of intraocular lens was uh, quite good during this surgery and uh, 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 and central part of the intraocular lens was in the uh, uh, pupil. And after surgery, this patient had vision 9-10 for far distance and 7-10 for near distance. Here you can see position of intraocular lens on Cassia 2 uh, OCT, and he reads uh, seventh uh, uh, number of text. Everything is fine. I'm very satisfied. He is uh, satisfied too, but, but this um, uh, experience show us that implantation of Adolf IOLs in these complicated cases is uh, quite normal and uh, can uh, give a good result for surgeon and for patient. 
as a conclusion, uh, 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 as a conclusion, uh, in my opinion, patient satisfaction after cataract surgery very often depends on choosing of uh, type of intraocular lens. Uh, modern types of intraocular lens, in most cases, all of us to satisfy all wishes of the patients. Advantages of IDOF IOLs. We can use this type of IOLs in complicated cases. It is not necessary to do bilateral implantation of IDOF IOLs in shortest time. But disadvantages of, of IDOF IOLs, they don't guarantee patients' independence of spectacles. And we don't recommend to choose this type of intraocular lenses for patients with mild or moderate myopia if they want to keep good vision on the near distance. For, uh, as for trifocal AOLs, uh, disadvantages of this type of AOLs is mostly we must do bilateral implantation of tri trifocal AOLs, and trifocal AOL decrease quality of vision. That's why it is not recommended in patients with additive eye pathology on, or in complicated cases. And advantage of trifocal AOLs, it is that in mostly cases it guarantees uh, independence of spectacles. Uh, uh, as a finish, I, I would like to invite you on our Ukrainian Congress of Surgery of Talmic Light 2021. It will be November 1920. Uh, I invite you, Andrzej Grzebowski, we are waiting for you very, very much. Uh, and uh, we, are, we will be very glad of your coming and of you being in our Congress. Thank you. Thank you, Volodomir, very much for the very nice presentation. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Professor Valery Serdyuk from Dniepro Pietrovsk, also from Ukraine. And this will be delivered as a video presentation. However, Valery is with us and he will be available during the discussion. Please. Dzień dobry, drodzy koledzy, bardzo dziękuję za możliwość uczestniczenia w tak autorytatywnej konferencji. Zwłaszcza wdzięczność do mojego bliski przyjaciel, którego znamo od 10 lat, Andrzej Grzybowski. Obiecuję nauczyć się i zaśpiewać piosenkę Czacza na naszej następnej konferencji offline. Uh, let me pass to my <coughs> presentation as a comparison uh, of visual function and degree of satisfaction with the vision quality in patient after implantation of diffraction refraction and refraction intraocular lenses. Multifocal intraocular lenses are increasingly used in uh, surgical practice in the treatment of cataract and refractive lens replacement. Uh, the structural feature of multifocal IO create uh, the development of undesirable light phenomena, uh, the most common halo, glare, flare, and crescents. Refractive lenses use zone with different refractive power to achieve multifocus. Uh, the quality of vision provided the refractive depends on the side of the pupil the location and number of refractive zone. Diffractive lenses are based on the principle uh, where each point on the waveform can be source of secondary waves, Kugin's Fresnel principle. Uh, the false difference of the elementary secondary waves arriving at the observation point leads to their m mutual application. Now we can see the comparison uh, refractive and de-refractive lens simulation in Zamax on the up. This is the diffractive and uh, uh, down refractive lens. Uh, the lens comparison, uh, dif uh, diffractive lenses, it's excellent reading and reading vision, difficult in working with the gadgets, Discomfort when working with a computer and less dependent of pupil size. For refractive lenses, superb medium and long range vision, inability to read small text, fatigue during long work, 
and pupil size dependent. Combined lenses have both a diffractive element and a refractive element. In typical diffractive and refractive lenses, one of the surfaces is monofocal, refracting, smooth, and fine structured. Annual relief along the radial direction is applied to the other surface. Trifocality is achieved uh, exclusively by modification of the main and the false zone at eight lisa. Eight lisa tree consists of different false zones in event and odd zones. Lisa's uh, abbreviation of the four unique principle of this IOL. Asymmetric distribution of light, independence from the pupil size, SMP technology, which allows to obtain ideal image quality in low light condition twin line vision and aberration correction due to optimized spherical optics, providing increased contrast sensitivity, depth of focus and visual acuity. Uses uh, enlightened technology, uh, panoptics uses enlightened technology, enhanced light energy. A uh, high degree of use of light with a pupil diameter of 3 mm is possible to deliver 88% at light flux uh, to retina uh, and a positive di diffraction multifocal optics. Biflex, uh, elevated fast shift technology, 7 concentric uh, diffraction step with are located to, which are located in the center of 3.0 millimeter zone of the optics uh, intermediate peak for intermediate vision uh, now you can see the slides where we compare the all kinds of uh, of the lenses the study was uh, uh, conducted at the uh, Premises of the communal uh, enterprise in Petrovsk Regional Ophthalmological Clinical Hospital uh, within the period between January 1 and July 1, uh, 2018 and 2019. Uh, the list of patients included 45 persons at 90 eyes at the age from 33 to 82 years uh, who met the criteria of inclusion, in particular uh, the binocular implantation of intraocular lenses of mode aqueous panoptics A D Lisa and B flex, absence of uh, severe medical pathology, including uh, autoimmune disease, uh, as well as absence of coxiting eye disorders, uh, which may influence of acuity of patient's vision in the postoperative period. A unified quality of vision questionnaire was chosen, uh, which makes uh, it possible to evaluate 10 frequently occurring symptoms according to three criteria. Symptoms frequency, severity, and bothersome. It is suitable uh, for measuring subjective satisfaction uh, with the quality of vision in patients with uh, all type of refractive vision correction. Uh, to illustrate and uh, exclude the influence uh, of the researcher uh, on patient's answer, uh, the questionnaire used uh, illustration of this photopsy, like uh, hello, uh, starboards, uh, glare, distortion, hazy vision, blurred vision, and double vision. 45 patients, 90 eyes, aged uh, 33 to 82 years, uh, who fit the inclusion criteria were included. Uh, the mean actual length of the eye was 23 millimeters, uh, UCVA 0.21 uh, or 200. Patients report the most frequent dysphotopsia, glare, hosting, and uh, visual impairment in the evening. Uh, glare and halo more often occurred under mesopic condition as uh, reported by 26 patients, 57%. Uh, 
three patients, maybe near 7%, can still resort to spectacle correction. Visual acuity above uh, 20, 22.5 at the near uh, 30 centimeters and far 5 meters 40 was uh, absorbed in uh, 41 patients, uh, 91%. Uh, at a distance of uh, 80 centimeters, the average visual acuity was 0.6. Now we can see the slide, the AT laser lenses demonstrate excellent result in the near 0.9 and the far 0.93 focuses. Uh, and the uh, smooth uh, decrease uh, to 0.6, the distance of 80 centimeters. The flag standards show excellent results in near, uh, 0.9 at far, uh, 2020. And uh, distance in the intermediate <coughs> range of 60 centimeters is 0.76. The smallest visual acuity of 0.65 is observed at a distance 40 centimeters from, from the eye. Panoptic lenses showed a uh, competitive result at close 0.87 and uh, far 0.95 distance uh, a more pronounced dispersion of the result at the distance of 40 centimeters is 0.75 at a distance of 80 centimeters show a decrease in visual acuity to 0.6 Biflex at an intermediate distance of 80 centimeters show the best result. Visual accuracy of close and far distance is close to reference. The frequency is uh, occurrence was Acri self panoptics, uh, 64%, 50% really, uh, 40% often, and at least 43% really 14% and 21% often and 7% very often and B-flex 53% uh, 47 really and uh, near the 6% often. The strongest manifestation was recorded in one person from the 80 Lisa group, it's a 7%. Then sensitivity <coughs> of the weak manifestation and the higher was Microsoft Panoptics may near 42%, 43%, uh, and uh, 35% low intensity and 7% moderate. At Elisa, 35%, 40% weak intensity and 7% moderate and 14% high intensity. And B-flex, 11% minor manifestation. The strongest manifestation since it was observed in the group with At Elisa, 14%. Irritation is present in 50% Microsoft panoptics, namely 42% of respondents. Respondents noted milk irritation and 7% very severe irritation. At Elisa, 21% and Biflex, 35%. The incident rate was 78% Microsoft panoptics. 35% rarely in 42% very often. At least 71%, 21 rarely in 50 very often, and B-flex 74%, nearly 75%, 35% rarely and 30% very often. A high degree of intensity is known by 15% of respondents. Accuracy of panoptic 40%. And uh, Adelisa, 35%, Biflex, none of respondents know the high degree of intensity. Irritation arose only 30% of respondents. Uh, severe irritation in Acris of Panoptics was 28%, Adelisa, 35%, Biflex had a total irritation 23%. The milk irritation may be near 6% and 70% zero. Visual uh, impairment at dusk was observed in 64%, rarely uh, 57%, often 7%. In the panoptics group, AD Lisa, impairment of vision occurred only 42%. Biflex vision impairment occurred 
56%. 11, very often, and 47, really. The intensity of the panoptics group is 21%, 7% in the all three degree of manifestation. At Elisa has a low intensity, 21%, and a moderate intensity, 7%, and near 6% of respondents reflects moderate intensity of vision loss. Visual impairment at dusk uh, is of little concern since it has a small degree of manifestation in the panoptics group. This worried 14% of respondents. Adeliza, 14, the same one, uh, the seven almost did not bother, and seven minor concerns. And reflects just only 6% of respondents' moderate intensity of vision loss. The diagrams show that the larger and zoning of lens, the more is becomes dependent on the diameter of the pupil. Panoptics 42% say that after surgery, the operation has to use spectacle correction. 35% sometimes, 7% often. Atelisa 36%. Uh, 28% sometimes, 7% often, reflex, 35%, uh, 30% sometimes, and uh, 5.9% near, near the 6% often. The level of overall satisfaction was usually considered by ranking all the answers. Uh, they continue their number. Now you can see the level of satisfaction. Displace it, rather satisfaction, satisfy the bird satisfaction. Conclusion The ultimate of the lenses provide clues to reference visual acuity at different distances. The presence of glare and hosting is more pronounced in diffraction lens accuracy of optics and idealism. The share of visual acuity is subjective satisfaction was. 30%. Biflex combination lens show the best visual acuity and subjective satisfaction. When you choose in multifocal lenses, one needs to take into account the psycho emotional status, profession, and lifestyle in each case. And then everything will be fine. I would like to thank for everything, for everybody for attention from our team. Thank you. Dear Valerie, thank you um, very much for this presentation. Uh, we should have now the discussion. Unfortunately, the session is very much delayed. Uh, also, well, some presentations were, were prolonged. So now, uh, and finally, we do not have uh, many questions from the audience. Uh, they could be also addressed uh, um, at the chat. But now it is my pleasure to welcome everybody to the uh, uh, music performance by our special guest, Professor Dan Renstein, who is uh, well known, not only expert in the uh, uh, refractive surgery, but we all are, well, many of us at least, are fans of his uh, musical talent. Uh, so please, uh, uh, spare a few minutes with uh, uh, Dan Reinstein as a perf music performer. <laughs> okay. Oh, so this is, um, thank you for asking me to do this. I, I, I will admit that it was the bribe uh, to, uh, to, to, to take the afternoon off and, and, and participate. But um, I just want to do a quick test before, you know, There'd be nothing worse than doing this and then it doesn't work. So what I want to make sure of is that if I'm playing my backing track, which is in the window, that you can still see my video. That's my question. Or that the audience can still see my video. Is that going on? So, so if I play this, can, can you still see me moving? Yeah, I, I can see you. But okay, uh, but can the audience see me moving? Yeah. Can the audience see both both my video and the and the track? 
unfortunately, I'm not following the uh, the audience view, so I cannot confirm that. However, well, this is the question to our technical support, and then please confirm or anybody who follows also the audience view. Or maybe the public chat, somebody can say whether they can see both. Oh, yeah. On the public chat, please uh, confirm that or let us know. So can you can you see me while you're seeing? Can you see both the screen share and my video? So you you can hear that, yeah, and you can see yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just uh, introduce. <laughs> so what I'm gonna, what I'm, I'm doing is I'm mixing my live performance with a background track because otherwise it would just be saxophone by itself. So that's, which is nice. But um, okay. this track is a composition by um, uh, uh, Bob. Um, oh God! Well, it's, it's Dave Sanborn, right? It's Dave Sanborn and 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 Bob. Um, you know, what's his name? And um, they wrote this composition called Maputo. And I've recorded it uh, with um, a, a great musician called Morris Pleasure, who was the musical director of Earth, Wind and Fire. And because I did Presbyon for him, he was very kind uh, to uh, uh, arrange this track for me, which is now going to be on my new CD, my new record. And so what I'm doing is I'm playing the background without the saxophone in it so that I can play the saxophone live for you. Uh, so I hope this I hope this comes across um, in the right way.
Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is such, such, a, such a pleasure not only to listen, but also to watch you playing. I'm so uh, and and finally, let us know when your uh, new uh, record will be uh, available. Uh, so uh, we must go on with the conference. Thank you again very much. We appreciate it very much, uh, not only for your scientific input, but also that you uh, will help us to 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 bring some comfort and fun to this uh, to this uh, meeting. <laughs> <laughs> at least if they don't agree with my science, at least I, I gave them something, right? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And, and I would like to thank all the speakers. Well, Valeri, yes, please. Uh, uh, we can you... take, by the way, we, we can take the organizer on our band, by the way. I, I, I'm singing and playing a guitar. Okay. Sorry, I didn't uh, understand. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm singing and playing guitar. We, we can organize our band. So uh, the next time. Thinking about me, okay? Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, let's do it. Let's has do it. a very, very opera voice. He is yeah, a very sure. good singer. <laughs> we usually listen to him on all our congresses a uh, few years ago, yes? Yeah, this indeed. I can confirm that. So next year, Valeri, uh, we will uh, 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 invite you to, we'll to, to, November, to, the way, also yeah. to the cultural uh, uh, program. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've decided, by the way, be, be, be there. Yeah. So we, we, we can meet there. We will meet together in Kiev on November and <laughs> we will sing together. <laughs> yeah, we must go on with the program. I, I, I'm very sorry because of the delay in the program. Like also a musician, I'm re I'm really uh, crashed, crashed about then. That's a uh, 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 sure. That you must have waited. Uh, I've, uh, I've never heard long time. Then, thank you very much for this session. Uh, uh, I close the session, and now uh, soon we will move into uh, the next session. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.